Hi everyone, welcome to the Beautaholic Design Studio. I'm Kat Sylvie and I'm joined today by Julie Bean. And we are here and we are talking all about tassels and fringe. This is one of the latest summer trends and we are so excited to show you guys how you can bring it into your DIY jewelry and really get the most from this trend. Yeah, and this is such a fun and easy trend to incorporate into your designs. So. Absolutely, and it's so colorful. We are just so excited to kind of show you everything that we've been working <laughs> on and we've had a lot of fun preparing we have. we have. I came in one day after being gone for a couple days and Kat had literally made like 10 projects. <laughs> I got a little carried away. <laughs> well, I can tell you were having fun. <laughs> you know, and, and the thing is, I love how versatile it is mm -hmm. and we have so many different styles that we're going to be talking about and all kinds of different ways that you can wear the trend as well. Yeah, and this is something we are seeing in boutiques. We're seeing it on TV and movies and fashion magazines. We're seeing tassels and fringe everywhere and we're seeing them from teeny, teeny, tiny little ones to yep. huge, like, tassel earrings that go down to here. So this is really a trend that we're seeing everywhere and it's fun, it's playful, and it's really yeah. easy to achieve if you like making your own jewelry, which we hope you do if you're joining us, because we yeah. sure do. So yeah, so as we're kind of chatting here, send in some questions. We're here to answer any questions you might have about tassels or, or hey, what's that? Show it again. We're here for you because we want you guys to get the most out of this class. We love doing these. We do these once a month yeah. and it's a great opportunity for us to kind of interact with you guys in real time. Yeah. So speaking of commenting, we actually have a giveaway. So if you've joined us live previously, you know that we always love to do a giveaway. So for this class, we are giving away some really great things. So we're going to be giving away a couple of different styles of tassel. Here I have some of those nylon tassels with those little caps on them. And then we also have some chain tassels. And the neat thing about this is you're noticing some kind of funky components here. Well, actually, let me draw your attention over here. We are giving you the full components to make the Valencia earrings. And Julie made these, and they are just so fun and really fashionable. And this really talks about what Julie was talking about, where it's like that really nice, long, elongated, mm -hmm. beautiful piece there. So you're going to get all the components to make those earrings. Yeah, and we do have a whole video showing you how to make them. So if you win this, you could go check out our video and see how to make these from start to finish. Yeah, and we're also giving you some other types of tassels. We're giving you some beautiful silk thread that we'll show you how to work with as well. And then we're giving you a little ream of seed beads. Now you're probably wondering what that is for, and I'm about to show you here in just a moment. So all you need to do to win the giveaway is just leave a comment below, say hi, let us know where you're tuning in from, or if you have a question, that enters you for the giveaway as well. So. I don't know, Julie, are you ready to dive in? I am ready to dive in and I can't wait because I know what you're going to do first yes. and I have not actually <laughs> seen you do this before. Oh. I don't know how to do this. All right, well, so. I, did, I did do this in a video. Yes. So I, I'm, this is sort of my, my redo to show you guys here, but this is a technique that I discovered that I was really excited because I love the end result and how you can really make it your own. You can do a little bit or you can do a lot. So the first technique I'm going to show you is something that I've searched for and I've heard it called coraling or beaded coral. So it's just kind of whatever you want to kind of call it. I like beaded coral. We'll go with that one. <laughs> All right. So here's an example of that. Now this is that beautiful beaded coral tassel and I added some beautiful wood beads and seed beads at the top there with some lovely sea glass. So let me just kind of set that down there for you. So this is sort of that coral. So I'm just going to pull one out to the side. So I'm going to show you how to do this with some seed beads. Now if you joined us for our live class where we talked all about seed beads, we talked about check glass being a little irregular. And this is one of the applications that I love using those check glass beads for because they're irregular. So you're getting this really organic feel of that beautiful beaded coral. So to make that coral, I have some coral seed beads here. Now this is a beautiful mix of that lovely red and orange coral. And today, um, just so that it shows up for you guys, I'm gonna use the fire line, the black set, and I'm gonna use a four pound. Um, but definitely go ahead and match your fire line to your seed beads. If I was doing this for a real project, I would probably use some crystal just because I wouldn't want it to show up, but I want you guys to be able to see what I'm about to do here. And then I'm going to be using some gold closed jump rings here. Now you're going to kind of see that I have my needle threaded here. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to pick up that closed jump ring and just kind of thread it down almost all the way to the end. And now I'm just going to tie a couple overhand knots. And the thing I love about this is you don't have to worry about making this part nice and pretty because it's all going to be hidden under a beautiful bead cap. So I'm actually going to do one more knot just for a little security. All right, so now I have my closed jump ring with my little knot on it. So now I'm ready to add my beading. 
So here's the fun part, and here's where I say that you can make it as long as you want and just add as many coral pieces as you want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up a whole bunch of seed beads. And I, again, I just love this mix. There's some shiny, there's some matte, there's some frosted pieces in here. So you're really getting just a beautiful mix of colors. And we have uh, several mixes of the Czech glass, so these are just really fun. And these are 11-0 seed beads. Now, if you're wondering, and if you kind of see something that we're working with here today, we do have a product collection, and that is uh, available by going to Beadaholic. We're actually also gonna kind of include that link here for you just below. And this will give you all the options to see the stuff that we're working on. So if you're like, ooh, what's that? Head over there and we'll be able to kind of show you a little bit more specifically what we're working with. All right, so let me get a few more on here. That is such a pretty color combination. Oh, I know, I love this. I think I might have to make a third one. I already made, I already made a second one. I think I might have to go back and make a third one. <laughs> well, I, I like it because it almost transcends every season. Like you could wear yeah. that in the autumn, you could wear that in the spring or the summer. It's just such a pretty, pretty color combo. All right, so what I've done here is I've strung about two and a half inches or so just of my little beads here, just right up next to that jump ring. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna skip over that first bead there and I'm actually gonna go back through, I'd say about seven or eight beads or so there. And this is again where it's totally personal. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of string it up there and now, as you can see, I'm sort of coming out to the side with my thread right there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pick up a few more seed beads. Let's see, maybe like eight or 10 or so. All right, and I'm just gonna string those all the way down. And now I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. So I'm gonna skip over that first bead and I'm gonna go back through all those little beads that I strung. And I'm gonna come up so that I have a little piece of coral. Now I'm gonna continue working my way up by going back through that main section there and bringing my needle up a little bit further. There we go. So now you can see that I have that little piece of coral at the bottom there. Kind of turn that around for the camera, there you go. So now let's say I want to add a few more, but I want to add just a couple of beads this time. Just so I want a little tiny piece of coral. And I'm just going to turn that around. Again, skipping over that first bead there. Going all the way back through. And I'm going to try to do this all in one step, try to get it back up through some of those beads going up through the top there. So this is the whole technique, and this is just a really fun way, and you can kind of see that it starts to develop. And when you put a whole bunch of these together, you get that really beautiful beaded tassel. And you can actually do one more thing that I'm gonna show you quickly here, is I'm going to add on a whole bunch here. And I'm gonna go out to the side. And now I'm gonna go only back through a few of those beads because I'm gonna add an extra piece of coral out here. So it's just creating these little branches of coral. And like I said, when you put them all together, you can just see the result is just gorgeous. And this is why I love using the bead mixes. You don't have to use the bead mix. One thing that I've also done, and I'll show you, I have a little example here that is actually a little bit more of a fringe, where I've added, it's been the same color of the coral, but then I've added a little accent on the bottom there. So I'll show you that in just a moment. All right, now I'm headed right back up to the top for this one. I think this piece of coral is done for me. So all I need to do is bring it back up to the top there. And then I'm just gonna go through my little jump ring. And you have to use a closed jump ring for this. I'm gonna make a little knot there. Pull it down. And then I'm ready to start my next little branch. So what you'll do for this piece of coral here is you'll create three or four, as, as full as you want, pieces of coral, and you'll do this for several separate jump rings. And then what you simply do is just add it all together, and then you're gonna pull it through a bead cap here. So you can just see that I have a few pieces in there. Pull it through a bead cap using some Griffin silk for my purposes here. You can also use some beading wire, but then you'll get that lovely little result there of having this beautiful beaded tassel.
So I did that one in a sort of oceanic color. I did this one in a silver. And that other technique I was telling you about, I did one single color, but then I made sure that each little tip had a little rose gold seed bead to it. So there's a lot of different ways to do this. It's really, really fun. And with those bead mixes, it is absolutely perfect. And this, again, is a great way to use those check glass seed beads that are a little irregular. So you're gonna get that nice little kind of coral effect. I love that. I Isn't had no fun? idea how you did that. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at, I haven't had a chance to watch your video yet. Oh, and yeah. that is so neat. And I love it's really organic. I think that's what I love about it too, because you can actually make it really, really long, or you can make it nice and tight and short. So yeah. it's it's really fun. It also seems like it. there's no wrong way to do it. That's what I love about it. <laughs> I, I love I love when I can say there's no wrong way to do it. <laughs> oh, so, that's so fun. Thank you. I I enjoy that. <laughs> so I, I might continue this and make another project out of it. Actually. I think you'll have to. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So Julie, what do you have for okay, us there? So I have something that's uh, a little bit different, but this is something I had been seeing are these little um, tassels here that are made with ultra suede. And they're really very, very simple. And they're one of these projects that you can use some of your old scraps for. So I, I tend to not toss anything. I like to just, you know, not waste and also I always think I'm gonna find a use for it. So this is a great application for some old scraps of ultra suede. And you can see you could do it in a variety of colors. And what we're going to be doing them around are these little tiara cast rings. And these are little connector links. There's a whole bunch of different ones and different finishes, and they're about 20 millimeters. There's also other sizes available, so you can check that out too at beetaholic.com. But for my purposes, I'm gonna use this little guy right here and I'm gonna be using some of this microfiber suede. And you see it comes in a variety of colors, actually many more colors than what you see here. And this is nice because you get a three yard spool. And to make each tassel, you're gonna need 27 inches. So you can make four tassels out of a spool of thread. So the way you're gonna do this is you're gonna measure off three lengths that are nine inches long each. And you can definitely mix and match colors. That's what I did with this one. And again, that was my little scrap piece, but I think it looks really nice. Yeah, I love that two-tone style that you did there. Yeah, I thought that actually was nice because it was just like, you could really play with the colors. You can even do three colors if you wanted to because you're using three strips. Okay, so we got three strips that are nine inches long each. And we are going to do this very easily. And so you're just gonna line up the tips. And we're gonna be making a lark's head knot here. And so we're gonna pull this down and we're gonna to try to find that middle point. So we've got the middle right here. I'm gonna fold it over, keeping them all together. And you're going to feed it through your ring, just like so. And you wanna kind of put your finger in here so you have a nice little loop. And we're just gonna go ahead and make that lark's head knot by tucking those ends through and pulling them. So this is what we've got. And you see it's a little bit loose right here. So just keep holding on to it and then pull down. And what you can do at this point is you can kind of try to straighten this out a little bit if you want to. And you wanna make sure you pull all of these together and tight and can keep pulling the strands. Figure out where that loose one is, there we go. And then just pull it really nice and tight. And if you pull it tight enough, you're gonna notice something, that this has some texture to it, it has some grip to it. You don't need to use any glue. These, this knot is not going to come out. And then you just decide how long you want it to be and trim the ends and you have tassel. I love that, that's so great. Yeah, and you know what, I could definitely see a design where you stack up a whole bunch, you make mm -hmm. a lot of different colors together. And I think we talked about this, um, before we started this broadcast about like purse charms. Yes. So that yeah. could be a really fun purse charm oh, I love too. That. And what you can do is if you want to turn it into a finished piece, I just took a jump ring and a finished chain and hung it on it. So Perfect. really simple, really easy. We're talking, a, you know, an item of jewelry that takes maybe two minutes to make. Oh, so I love. if yeah. you're looking to make some gifts or, you know, you just want to have a really fun on-trend piece of jewelry that's quick and easy, this is an idea for you. Nice. All right, we do have a question before we move on here. Uh, yeah, so first, uh, Kimberly asks, what 
ring? Oh, oh. So okay. Kimberly is asking, what is the size of the ring that Julie's working with there? So this is a 20 millimeter ring. It's a little bit under an inch. Um, it is by Tierra Cast, and they have several different styles in that size, but you can really use a bunch of different sizes. Okay. And I think we have another question as well. Yeah, a question from Paige. Uh, uh, concerning of cast projects, uh, sure. beaded tassels, uh, they want to know if they, you can use different bead sizes for those. Oh, absolutely. So this is from Paige. She's wondering if you can use different sizes of beads to create the beaded tassels here. Absolutely. I've done this with 15 O's, and you can get really crazy with the tiny ones, but you can also use 8 O's. I might not want to go a little bit bigger than that, but you could absolutely use this technique to do that. I just have only used 15, 11, and 8's. So I know that those ones work, but I think you could use some 6 O's if you wanted to. We have some, again, some great color varieties in that as well. But yeah, there's, like we said, there's no wrong way to do it. Okay. So you can definitely do a little bit of a bigger bead if you wanted to kind of get that technique, especially yeah. if you are making making something that's really big and you want to go big and bold, why not? I, the only thing I would say is you might want to, um, these are five millimeter jump rings that I'm using here. If you're using bigger beads, I would suggest going up to this up a size in your rings or up a gauge to really help that out. And I was using the four pound. If you're using an 8-0 or a 6-0, something that's a little bit larger, go ahead and bump that up to the six pound or the eight pound. So that's the only adjustment that I would recommend that you make just to really make sure that your beads aren't gonna kind of fall off or be too heavy on the four pound because you can actually, um, this is great for the 11s, but I would go up a size. So that's what I would recommend, but absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, it could be really pretty if you mix and match too. Ooh. Like you could put like big ones at the tips or you could do something. You oh, know. I like that. Yeah, because I, I just did colors at the tips, but yeah, you could do bigger beads at the bottoms to kind of give it that little weight. I yeah. like that. <laughs> oh, we have another question. Uh, uh, so we asked what size thread we're using on the beaded tassel. Oh, um, so uh, Reed is asking, what size thread? I was so I was using the four pound for this for the uh, examples that I showed here. But again, if you are using bigger beads, you can bump that up a little bit. But for today, for the eleven O's, for the check glass eleven O's, I was using the four pound thread. Okay. And keep those questions coming. We love hearing yeah. them. Yeah. And you know, the thing is, is we've done a lot of trial and error with stuff, mm -hmm. so we know what works for the most part, so we're here to kind of help you guys out, because we've definitely wasted some stuff. Sorry. Yes, <laughs> yes. But that's how we know, and that's how we kind of design. We get a chance to really play with a lot of the stuff and work with it in our space to make sure that you guys are getting um, the right size and the right fit for everything. So yeah. you, it gives you a little bit more of a stronger jumping off point. Yeah, I, I know Kat's mentioned this before, but we have hundreds and hundreds of projects um, on Beataholic.com, so if you have an idea for a project and you're not quite sure what thread size to use or what bead size, you can go onto our website, look under the projects, and then find one that's maybe similar in technique to what you're trying to do and see what we recommend because a lot of that will translate to other applications. Yeah, and I actually, um, so I do a lot of the answering of the Facebook questions as much as I can. I know customer service is wonderful for helping me out, um, but I actually had a question for, hey Kat, I wanna use this bead and I wanna use a bead cap. Can you recommend a couple different sizes and styles that might work? So I was able to kind of put some stuff together mm -hmm. and go, oh, this one will work and I've tried that one before and I directed them to another project that we had done and I actually directed them to another kit. So there's a lot of things that, that we can kind of help you guys out. So if you're not sure and, cause we don't want you to hesitate to buy something or get the wrong thing because that can be really uh -huh. disappointing too. So we try to help you out by um, kind of mixing and matching and helping you guys with the right fit for everything. Yeah. So don't be afraid to ask. Yeah, we're yeah. here. We are. <laughs> and, and we love doing that too. I think yeah. we really love helping. So definitely ask away whether it's during a live broadcast or any other time on Facebook or calling into our customer service. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right, so Julie was actually talking about purse charms for a second, so that's a great segue for me because I want to talk about another way that you can use Ultra Suede, but I'm actually using Ultra Suede strips here. Now these, these we usually use for beading foundation, so today I'm actually going to show you how you can cut these to make little tassels. So I have a couple examples down here, and let me start by showing you the purse charm that I made. So this I put together a couple different styles and you'll see that in one of these we have a beautiful patterned ultra suede. Now the patterned ones I will say are limited edition so once they're gone they're gone so be sure to shop early. Again this is all in that product collection so we do have these beautiful patterned ones and we do have some solid colors as well but this is a great little way to use these ultra suede strips and we were talking about kind of sizing it to your right size so we have uh, this is similar to what I'm gonna make here using a bead cap with the ultra suede. And then we also have one that's nice and tiny and teeny tiny cute. 
And then I have another one here where I actually used the um, Swarovski Crystal Hot Fix to create a little studded look. And I love how it looks with that little Rivoli setting and that Swarovski Crystal that sits right on top. So here's a couple little examples of some of the bead caps. So you can do something a little smaller, you can do a cone. Um, these are the ones that I used for that beaded tassel, but you could use it in this application as well. And then we also have something that's a little bit larger. So if you really wanna go, go for it and make some bigger tassels, we have a lot of different varieties. And this is a very small collection of the types that we have, so, so go nuts and have fun. But let me just show you kind of really quick what I've got working here. So I have a couple pieces of the pattern, and then I have a piece here that is that sort of flat, beautiful sort of royal blue. So what I'm gonna do here is all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my little snips here and you're gonna want some sharp scissors for this. Now this piece here is about two and a half inches, I believe I cut it to, nope, three, I lied, three inches. <laughs> so what I, all I'm gonna do, and this is where you can kind of make it your own, is just take your scissors and cut your strips all the way up towards the top. Now you're gonna wanna stop when you're at the point that's gonna fit inside your bead cap. So I have just a little bit of space there. So I'm gonna take one of my bead caps and just kind of sit it up there and line it up. So that's about where I want that to be. So you can actually draw a line because that'll be kind of closed into there if you want. But all you're gonna do is just continue to make those strips. Now I'm gonna go a little, little quick here, so please forgive my cutting, but be sure to take your time when you're doing this. But this is a great little way to, to utilize these as well. I think the advantage for using the actual length here of the ultra suede versus what I just used is they are connected already yes. versus individual strips that you would have to then somehow connect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you can also um, use the material that Julie was using, but you'd have to kind of gather them all together in some way and then really glue them up in there. So this is a little kind of way to get around that. It's a nice little trick. Yeah, and um, just to talk a little bit about the hot fix that I used there. So what I ended up doing was I cut all these little strips and then before rolling it, and you're gonna see me do that here in just a minute, before rolling it up into my bead cap, that's when I put the little hot fix on there. So if you're wondering at what stage that happens, it's after you cut your little strips here, but before you roll it up into the um, into the bead cap. Also that way you'll be able to see like, oh, do I wanna add it on each and every one? Do I wanna add every other one? However, it's gonna kinda of roll up there for you. All right, this is some sloppy cutting, I apologize. I apologize, live audience. <laughs> All right, just a few more here. And I think I'm actually getting towards the end of where I need to be. So I'm actually gonna kinda of trim that off, there we go. All right, so now I have my little, my little fringy tassel that is sort of undone here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use some E6000, and I have a little post-it here where I'm just gonna kinda put that down. And all I'm gonna do is put a little bit of glue there. And I'm gonna take a toothpick, and before I roll it up, I'm gonna get that glue in there, because I wanna kinda really Make sure that it's gonna be nice and coated in there. And the nice thing about E6000 is it actually starts to create like a little tackiness. And that's what I want, because I don't want the glue to be too wet when I put the ultra suede in, because the ultra suede is a fabric, so it will sort of take on this sort of, um, the coloring, so it could discolor. So do your glue first, let it sit for a second, and then just roll up your tassel, just on the side here. And there we go. And now I'm just gonna fit that into my little bead cap. And I like to give it a little twist just to kind of make sure that they're all gonna be up in there and nice and tight. There we go. All right, so now I'm just gonna let that sit, but you can see how easy that is to create a little tassel with just a little bit of that E6000. So yeah, so, and the thing is, is you can make this as tiny, as big, as thick, and you can actually create multiple strips, um, use this pattern stuff. It looks really cool and really fun when you kind of get it in that tassel form. So that's just a great way to use the ultra suede strips to make a tassel. Very nice. So yeah, quick and easy. Yeah, and they're all <laughs> perfectly the same length too. 
And that's what I, that's another <laughs> thing. It, we make it nice and easy because if you cut your strip here, you know that even if you're kind of making some jagged cuts in here, that actually kind of you can you can see how sloppy I was with those cuts, but they actually kind of disappear a little bit when you put it into the tassel because you're creating that movement with it. Yeah. Well, it looks so, great. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, Julie. So, what do you what do you got next for us? Right. So you're going to talk about some different types of tassels. I am going to start talking about some different types of tassels. So we've covered the beaded tassels, we've covered the ultra suede tassels. So now let's talk about chain tassels, and then we're also going to talk about some more fabricy type tassels, both the ones that you can make and the ones that are pre-made. So in front of me, I have some chain tassels, and these are actually what I used for the Valencia earrings right here. And you can see this is a little ball chain. And these come pre-made, which is nice, because that makes life really, really easy. So we have some ones right here, and this size and style is really great. And you see it's that little cable chain, and what's nice is you can add extra beads to this. So if you wanted to kind of decorate this a little bit, you can definitely add little beads with jump rings to the tips of these. So I'm gonna draw your attention over here right now. Now this is something different. This is something I had made a little fringe, but if you see how I put that little seed bead on the little four millimeter jump ring and then connected it to the end of the chain, you can do this exact same technique over here for this tassel. So that's kind of a fun, versatile way of adding just some color to these if you want to do that. And then we also have these ball chain ones and you can see they have these great bead caps are already on it and they already have an open jump ring as well. I think you can just hang this from a chain and call it good. It's a yeah. really simple piece of jewelry, but it would look just really beautiful and very on trend. And then we also have these other ones, which here, which are a little bit more of a petite scale. And again, it's a nice chain tassel with that open jump ring. And you can see that that was used right here in this piece. So they add just that kind of the updated look for you. So if you're really wanting to have something that, that looks very fresh, adding one of these chain tassels is a really nice idea. And now these are all live on the Beetleholic.com site today. This is a brand new product for us and we've had a lot of fun playing with it. And if you are commenting right now, you also have the chance to win some of these. So let's go ahead and look at our giveaway again. If you've joined us live before, you know during these classes we always have a giveaway and you enter by commenting either a question or just a hello or where you're from. We love hearing where you're from. So Kat has the giveaway. I think we're gonna look at it again right now. Yeah, because so these are the ball chain tassels that Julie was just talking about. We're gonna give you the silver and the gold version. And then we have some of those other little tassels here that have that beautiful chain. We're also going to give you some little capped tassels, and we're going to actually talk about that in just a little moment here. Uh, we have some with the jump rings, but you're seeing some beautiful components here, and you are going to get all the components to make the Valencia earrings that Julie made for it to go with our beautiful chain tassel launch. So you're also going to get that lovely coral uh, seed bead mix that I was using earlier today. So yeah, so we wanted to give you a full project to use, um, some of the tassels, and then we're also going to be giving you some of the silk cord as well. So we're going to talk about that in just a moment as well. Yeah, and we do have a question before we go on. Sure. Uh, yeah, so going back to the uh, coral uh, tassel project. Okay, sure. Um, uh, YouTube user Crafting Nook wants to know uh, how many strands of coral can you put on one closed jump ring before moving on to another one? Sure. Um, so the question is, how many? Oh, thank you. <laughs> how many strands of coral can you put on one jump ring before moving on to the next? I recommend um, if you're using 11 O's, I recommend about four to five. It depends on how full you want to make your coral. So just so you know, under here is about um, four of those. Uh, jump rings with five on there. So it also depends on the size that will fit underneath your bead cap. So for example, this is the bead cap that I use. So you can kind of see the size difference and sort of see the well there. But if you wanted to use something that has a little bit of a bigger well or something that is a little thicker, you might need to sort of adjust that. Also, again, if you wanted to use something a little thinner, adjust that as well. Now, this one is a little bit tough because you have to be aware of the size of jump rings that will fit into that cone. So I recommend trying to use something a little bit bigger if you want that nice full tassel. But I would recommend doing about four to five corals per jump ring. And then inside here, it's about four to five jump rings. Again, just however thick you want to make it. You'll notice on my little example here, one of the things that I would caution you about is so I have my little jump ring here and you'll notice that most of the coraling is at the bottom. I wouldn't go past about a half an inch or so because you're going to need some of those beads at the top to sit inside 
of that bead cap. So make sure that your coraling stops about a half an inch from where your jump ring is because you don't want to kind of try to like coral up here because that'll make it too thick to kind of fit inside of your bead cap. So hopefully that helps you a little bit. And if you do watch the full video that I did for this, you'll get to see um, several of the pieces laid out and how I gather them all together to actually put them through the bead caps. So you'll get to see that step as well. I just, I don't have, um, I don't wanna take the time today to do that, but I already did that in a video. So if you are curious about that, be sure to check out beadaholic.com. And if you're looking for these, um, this is the Seaside tassel necklace. And both of these are listed actually in that product collection that we were talking about. So I'll make sure that those links um, appear for you down below. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. More tassels. More tassels. <laughs> and we will get to fringe too. We for sure will. There's just so much, so many tassels and they're so fun. So. Well, and you know, tassels and fringe are kind of interchangeable. So we'll, we'll be popping back and forth. <laughs> Ab absolutely. And you can make tassel fringe. There, there you go. And we're going to show you we'll that. <laughs> <laughs> so let's look at some of the cloth tassels and then I'm going to show you how to make one yourself. So if we look down at this tray here, you see that there is a wide variety of pre-made cloth tassels. Now these are great if say you have a piece of jewelry, which Kat's gonna show you in a little bit here, that's already made and you just wanna pop a tassel onto it. So these are really ready to go, they're nice, and you see that they come in a variety of colors. They've got that cap on it where you can easily link a jump ring to. There's also tassels with a jump ring on them already. So we've got like this black one and they're all tied very neatly. And then there's other ones that you can go ahead and add your own jump ring to whatever size you want. And you can see some examples here. Now this is a previous kit that we've done that has the little tassels and the little charm. So very fun there. And then up here we have some great examples where they've just been added to an adjustable bracelet. So a lot of different options. And what's really great about these is, is that instant pop of color. It's that mm -hmm. instant kind of gratification that you've just really made a very updated piece that's really fun. And so maybe this is a good time for Kat to show you how to sure. add one. And then I'm gonna show you how to make one. Yeah, so this is actually a project that I had done previously. And I just wanted to create a lovely little way to show off those druzies. And I did this memory wire with noodle beads and lava beads. So again, this is the original project and we didn't quite have the tassels in when I made this, but now that we do, mm -hmm. I wanna add a little tassel to it. So I brought out this little black and silver cap. So all I'm gonna do is take a five millimeter 20 gauge jump ring and this is open. So I'm just gonna open that up with my pliers, slip on my little tassel and I'm just gonna add it to that last little loop of my memory wire, just on the outside there. And then just close that up. And that's it. So now I have tassel jewelry. <laughs> I just added a tassel. You can just do that, I love it. It's just, and then it just, again, if this was sort of, um, let's say it was all black and silver and I wanted to add a little pop of red, yeah. I can do that as well. I can just add that color to it. And tassels are another great way to sort of stack. So Julie was talking a little bit about our adjustable chain um, tassel bracelets. So I made one with light blue and one with dark blue. But if you kind of put them together, you could just stack these up. And it's a nice mm -hmm. little sort of fun, fringy sort of look when you kind of add all the tassels together and just make it your own. Yeah. So just a great little way to sort of um, personalize any, any piece of jewelry. Now what I love about this is you could actually, if, if two tassels are too much, you could add a little crystal to one side mm -hmm. or a little charm. And you know, let's say you wanted to add a little moon charm and then you could add one tassel. So there's no wrong way to do it and that is perfect. Yes, it, it <laughs> perfect really lets for me. you play. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right, well I'm gonna now show you how to make a longer tassel. So these tassels, we love them, but you'll notice they're about, let's find a ruler. Oh, yeah, yep. it's the ruler, is it me? Yep. <laughs> I got the ruler. Julie's got the ruler. <laughs> <laughs> Trying not to topple our giveaway tray. Um, so if we look at how big these are, they're a really nice size. You know, they're a little over an inch, like looks like about an inch and a quarter. And that's true for all of these, which is a really very easy to incorporate size. It works great for bracelets, um, necklaces, whatever you want to do, especially if you're going to stack and layer them. Mm -hmm. But what we are seeing with the tassel trend is there are some really, really large tassels out yes. there. Yes. Like, huge tassels. Big and bold and look at me tassels. Yes, yeah. yes. I think it's really one of those situations where you can't go too big. Yep. I mean, we've seen everything, so. Well, and if you make your own tassel, you can go as big or as tiny as you want. Exactly. You can go itty bitty if you want. <laughs> so for, 
For this exact trend, we've just brought in a new product to Beataholic.com and it's a silk thread. And I'm gonna show you it right here because it is a beautiful thread to make a tassel out of. So you see here, I have a bunch of different colors of spools and you get a lot. There's actually 140 yards on every spool. That's, that's a lot of tassels. It is a lot of tassels <laughs> and it comes in a variety of colors. Beautiful colors. And it's so soft. I, I know that that's It's something. really luxurious. Yeah, it's silk. It's 100% pure silk and it is just, it feels great. I was surprised at how soft and drapey it is. So I'm going to look at this one right here. Now I've done a lot of different projects, both that you see here and then that we still don't have um, live yet. So I've used a lot of my spool, but if you look at how this drapes, it's really got a nice drape to it and it is very, very silky. Again, it's size F and that correlates to about 0.34 millimeters. Okay. So that's the size of it. And I'm actually doing something with this right now that I'll show you guys all in probably about a week or two where I put a big eye needle on this. Oh, nice. So you can do a lot of different projects with this besides tassels, but I do want to show you how to make a tassel. So <laughs> Since we're talking about tassels. <laughs> since we're talking about tassels. So I'm going to show you how to do it very easily with a piece of cardboard. I literally cut this out of a Beataholic shipping box. <laughs> so, so, so if you bought from us, you probably recognize it. So you get a free tool with your order. There you go. See? <laughs> So, um, so that you don't waste, um, make this as big as you want your tassel to be. So if you're just going to make like a little tiny tassel like you see here, make it about this big. You want to give yourself a little bit of wiggle room, but don't use this big of a card to make this size tassel. You'll mm -hmm. end up wasting a lot of your silk and we don't want to do that. We want to make this stretch as far as it can. But I'm going to make one of these big tassels right here. So it's a very simple technique. First, we're going to go ahead and cut off, oh, about 10 inches or so. And I'm going to have a pair of tweezers handy. I found that the pair of tweezers is super useful in this technique. It just gives me that little bit of extra control. Okay, so now I'm going to unwind a bunch. And this is going to be a pretty big tassel. But because <laughs> you're getting 140 yards, you can do that with this. If you are trying to make a, a tassel with something that you maybe only got like three yards with, it would be a lot harder. Okay, that's good so, to know. Yeah, because there is a different, you know, you can make it as full as you want mm -hmm. or, as, or as slim as you want, so. Yeah, I love it that you get that big spool. All right, so we've just unwound a lot. All right. <laughs> da -da -da. <laughs> All the way back to the beginning. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to hold it against my card and I'm just going to wind it. Now, I think we do have a quick tip video that shows winding it around your hand, which also works, but you're limited to the size of your hand. Also, I always have trouble trying to get it off my hand. So, right? so this is a little, a little bit easier. And I think if, you know, that way also, um, sometimes even, even when you're using your hands, sometimes your fingers will separate. So mm -hmm. it's not as consistent as say, you know, a, a piece of cardboard or something that you've pre-measured. So if you are trying to make, let's say a pair of earrings or Absolutely. multiple tassels, definitely um, a structured piece probably works a little bit better. <laughs> All right, so just wind it as much as you want. Again, you can make it as thick or as thin as you want. Um, it's really just a personal preference. Once you have it to about where you want it, just cut. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to hold it in place and we wanna just go ahead and have something that anchors it. So we're just going to slip that cut piece of thread that we already had under all the strands. And we're just going to lay it down and tie a knot. And this is really an anchoring knot. It's just so that you know, I'm going to put it up towards the top and I'm going to tie it again. It's basically just keeping all your strands together. Now we're going to open a jump ring. I have a little five millimeter jump ring right here. So I'm just going to open that up and have that ready to go. I'm also gonna cut myself off another length and this is gonna be about, oh, 20, 24 inches. And now we're going to slip this jump ring under all your strands. And you can actually, this has some flex to it, which is nice, it's not rigid. So you can actually pick this up and just slide it under to make sure that you've got it around all the different strands and then just close it back up. Now I've done this two ways at this point. I have actually gone ahead and just put my jump ring up near that anchoring knot 
And then you'll see in a minute, I've just kind of um, incorporated that into my design. Other times I've put it like up here and I've just cut away that knot. Oh, okay. So kind of a personal preference, whatever you want to do. But basically at this point, you want to slide it off. And again, you've got some flex to this. And you've got, you can bend it. And you're just going to slide it off. And you're going to try to hold it together. And now you're going to fold it. And there you go. So you've got this. So you're holding that up. You're probably going to want to make sure that that open part of that jump ring is up top in case you want to use that to attach it to something here shortly. That's a good tip. So now we're going to take that cut piece we have and we're going to hold it. So we've got one tail that's four inches or so and we're going to start winding. And you're going to wind, wind, wind as much as you want to wind. Again, personal preference. I think you're hearing that probably a lot in this class, mm -hmm. and that is because there's just so much you can do with tassels, and it's really up to you what you want to do. Well, and as you start to work yourself, you'll start to see, oh, I think it needs a little bit more, or let's do a few mm -hmm. more wines. So that's why we're he hesitant to tell you, oh, it's four wines. You yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I probably cut too much here, so I'm just going to cut it off so I have a manageable amount. Again, I'm going to just hold everything in place. And this is where I like my tweezers again. It just gives me that extra control. I'm going to use my tweezers to help me tie a knot. And I'm going to do that again. Actually, I'm going to make this one a double knot. And just pull it down and pull it really tight. And you see, we have a tassel. And at this point, just go ahead Hold all of it down. I feel like I'm cutting hair at this point. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Pull it all the way down as long as you want it to be and trim the ends. So this here is our finished tassel. And now I'm going to give you two options for this back piece you see right here. So these were the strands that we tied. You can either try to just incorporate them into your tassel. So. You see, I've done that here with this one. They do stick out a little bit, but I think over time, gravity is just going to help to kind of pull them well, down. You could also um, put that into a bead cap, so Absolutely. then it would kind of fold it down for you. So that's an option as well. For sure, yeah. If you put that into a bead cap, that would just fold down. You can also put a little bit of glue and trim them. Now, I did use some GS Hypo Cement, and it does cause the thread to darken a little bit. So that's my only thing I kind of just want you to be aware of. Well, and that's what I was talking about with the Ultra Suede as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it uh, just be careful, let it kind of, because it will adjust, because it is fabric. It is know? fabric, yes. And if you've ever gotten even water on like a silk blouse, mm -hmm. you know it darkens. Yeah, so, so you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if that's the back of your design, then there's no problem. You just can see that it looks really nice and neat and tidy. And so there we go. That is how you make your own tassels, especially if you want to make long ones. All right, we do have a question actually. Mm -hmm. Hi, um, so Jared asked, uh, does this kind of product work the same with beading wire? And if so, what size beading would you suggest? So um, the question is, is, does this type of project work with beading wire? And can um, we ask you which project in particular you're um, asking about? Hi, hi, Jared. Yes. So, um, so we're just trying to get some clarification. Um, which project you're talking about? Are you talking about the silk tassel that Julie was just making, or um, some something else that we that we shown, or the coraling? Yeah, we've had a few questions about that. So, just clarify for us, and we'll get right back to you. Absolutely. All right. But let's go ahead and move on for right now. Um, but Jared, please do answer because we want to make sure that we answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the technique that Julie was talking about. Speaking of, you know, if that is the question, other types of styles. Um, we do have some beautiful beautiful metallic thread mm -hmm. and this is a great to use this is really really nice and thin this is a two ply and this is 25 yards so you're getting that beautiful kind of metallic polyester tassel and that's sort of great to actually add so you can create that purple tassel that she was working on and maybe add in a few strands mm -hmm. of the gold so or what would be really pretty because <laughs> you just gave me an idea yeah. do that winding bit with the gold. With the gold oh that could yeah. be lovely too. You can have that band of metallic. I like that yeah. yeah. So we can use the metallic threads, and we also do have some beetle on um, that is a cotton as well. And this is going to be a little bit more similar to the silk, so we do have that as well. So, all right, question? Uh, because of the off-loom beadwork, the one you were just working on. The, the off-loom beadwork that we were just working, is it the coraling then? 
This, okay, yes. so the Coraline. Maybe with the purple. The purple? Yeah. Okay, um, I would not recommend doing the tassel in this technique with the beading wire, yeah. just because it's stiffer and it's not gonna have that nice drape to it. Also, you're not gonna be able to do that tied band. You can't really not beading wire. Yeah, if you wanted to do something um, with beading wire, my recommendation would to try to do something where you have a closed jump ring, but you're gonna need to sort of anchor or clip it to the bottom, or you could do like loops of tassels, yeah. um, something like that. But yeah, for yeah. beading wire, I think it might be too stiff I think so to too. really use in that kind of winding application. Mm -hmm. um, it might yeah, also be a little thought. pokey too. Oh, I worry, yeah. Yeah, I worry if you've got too. something that's like hitting your neck, it might be a little bit rough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but good question, and yeah. thank you, thank you for watching and clarifying for us. Sorry, <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I know we're kind of we're jumping around, but yeah, if you have a question about something that we did in the beginning and you want to still ask, please still ask. We're still live, so um, yep. anything that you guys have, keep throwing at us. So. Absolutely. <laughs> I think are we about ready to move on to fringe? Let's talk about fringe. Let's talk about fringe. Let's talk about okay. Fringe. So I'm going to start <laughs> over here because I do have this example here mm -hmm. of the chain I fringe. I love that. And so this was something that I was doing, and I had originally just created the little wire wrapping at the base. I was like, you know what? It needed something in the middle. So I did this little chain fringe right here. And then if you look down here, this also is a chain fringe. Now it's interesting because you can do chain fringe in a couple different ways. You can actually just literally sew it on, which is yep. what this is. This is actually stitched on there with the same beading thread that was used to make the actual piece of beadwork. So that's definitely one idea. And then if you look up here, we just used an eye pin. So basically it just has like a suspension rod. Yeah, that's neat. <laughs> <laughs> so that's definitely an idea. And then there's other types of fringe, of course. Here is actually a little um, knotted beaded fringe. Yes, yeah, so that's a little macrame kind of style. Mm -hmm. And that uses um, metal seed beads. So if you're wondering what those colorful seed beads are at the bottom, those are metal seed beads. Very cool. Very cool and saturated. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> Again, it's just so summer and just juicy. I love it. Mm -hmm. Dagger fringe. Dagger fringe. That's a fun application, especially like this peacock design. You can do a dagger fringe. Here's actually even a fringe with actually gemstones. Mm -hmm. And you see there's little, uh, a petite fringe happening here and then that nice big one. And then what I'm wearing today and what you see down here is our fringe earring kits. And you see that fun movement and it is beaded. And if you're curious how to do this, check out um, the, the video for this kit and then Another quick tip is it's actually very similar to what Kat just did with her yeah. coraling, except for she we didn't go into branches. Well, and one thing that we haven't talked, or one material that we haven't spoken about yet is um, using Nymo. So mm -hmm. Nymo, when you're doing the beaded work like that, will actually give you that flowy, flowy fringe where you want it to just kind of sit really nicely. So that is the Nymo size D. And we pulled out just a few colors there, but yeah. we do have a lot more on the website. Um, and you can find all those in the product collection. But yeah, Nymo is a great thing to create that nice flowy fringe because it has that sort of, um, it's not as stiff as like a, a wire mm -hmm. or um, even a fire line might be. So the fire line works really good for the coraling because it kind you kind of want it to be yeah. like stiff and jagged and you know kind of have that style. But the Nymo will kind of fall nicely. Yeah, actually, I remember when I was designing this kit, I started with the fire line. Yep. And I, I couldn't get it to kind of have that that nice it kind of like soft did, yeah. drape. Yeah, that soft drape. That's yeah. a good way to put it. Perfect. And then I know you've got an interesting fringe that's actually made out of tassels over yes. on the other side. Yeah, so so another way to kind of do the fringe style is to do a fringe of tassels. So I did this lovely little um, gemstone piece here and these wood beads here, these are actually aromatic, so they actually smell like cedar wood. So really nice and fun to have, <laughs> you know, in the summertime. But yeah, so this is actually just sort of incorporating and this is just a strung project. So I just took those tassels and just strung them right in between all of those beautiful gemstones. So that's another way you can kind of do fringe. Um, another way I want to point out is I actually have this gemstone chain fringe. So this is a little bit more of a kind of thicker fringe and you're going to get a lot of those little like kind of chain pieces. So again, as you wear that, you're going to get that lovely, lovely movement. So, and then one more kind of example of a little fringe is this is just some eye pins here. I'm sorry, some head pins with little balls on the ends. And these are the true twos. And I wanted to use that sort of structure of the geometric post. And these have been really popular for us. So I'm, I'm so excited that I could kind of add a little fringe to it. But again, anywhere you can add that little pop of movement mm -hmm. is always just really, really fun. And you know, you can create, like we were talking about earlier, you know, a fringe of tassels. So there's this option as well to kind of bring that together 
together and just create that movement, but then you can create a lot of tassels and you're gonna get that beautiful sort of fanned out fringe. So I guess that's kind of the way that it's different is, yeah. you know, fringe is maybe more fanned out, yeah. but it's all the same. <laughs> it's all it's all the fun, and it's all about the movement and how you can kind of create that in your designs mm -hmm. and just make things really colorful. And you know, um, kind of segueing into something else that we have going on right now, we actually have some brand new kits launching here. So kind of speaking of something really colorful, if you're ready for summer, we have some beautiful rapid kits. Now these were actually really really popular and. The reason I wanted to bring these out today is, so we had gemstone rapid kits um, earlier this year, I'm sorry, at, at the end of last year, excuse me, and um, they did really well. And I actually had someone who uh, tagged us on Instagram with their version and they actually added a tassel to it. And I was like, that's so genius. <laughs> so now of course I just want to add little tassels to all of my little kits here. <laughs> and all you need to do is have a jump ring and a tassel. And that's, and that's you know, so yeah, it's just adding the, the little tassel with a jump ring and you can just make the design completely your own, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, so these are two whole honeycomb rapid kits. These are of course launching today at Beta Halik. So if you're curious, you can get um, the refill kit and the full kit, which will give you all of the tools and everything to make this. So it's actually, they're really fun and I loved designing these. They're really summery and fresh. And you know, again, I just, like I said, I just want to sort of take a little tassel and just add it. I just, I just want to add tassels now. <laughs> tassels to everything. <laughs> I know, it's like you need a tassel party. <laughs> you just need like your friends to come oh, over. Oh yes, this is our tassel party. <laughs> this we is our tassel party. We make all kinds of tassels. I think, I think the hard thing will be for me to like move on and not make as many things with tassels now because I've obviously made a lot with tassels. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, well, I think we're almost ready to, to wrap up this class, but we have not chosen a giveaway winner yet. So you still have a few minutes to get <laughs> in your comments. And again, this is, ooh, Oops, I got stuff it. is falling. I gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> so this again is our giveaway. It's all the ingredients to make the Valencia earrings. It's a spool of that size F silk thread that you just saw me make some tassels out of, extra chain tassels, these wonderful um, fabric tassels, like the textile. Mm -hmm. So, and then this beautiful, beautiful hank of seed beads to do your coraling. So you really get to do a lot of the things that you've just seen in this class if you win this giveaway. So definitely leave your comments um, and you know that will enter you to win if you're watching this live. Yeah. And if you're watching this after the fact and you wanna join us during a live broadcast, do subscribe to our newsletter. We always advertise it. It's on our homepage at beatahalik.com when it's going mm -hmm. to be. So you yep. can find out and that way. on Facebook and Instagram. So, you know, that's what I, another great thing is, you know, connect with us. We talk about, you know, reaching out to us, asking questions. But if you make something with the beautiful things that you've bought from Beta Halik, tag us on yeah. Instagram. We love to share what our customers are making and we love to see it. It inspires us, you know, and yeah. also if there's something that you were thinking about making mm -hmm. and you're not quite sure how to execute it, let us know because we take video requests and we very often mm -hmm. do them. I mean, we try, to, we try to get to everyone's request and it's actually really fun for us as designers to kind of see, hey, what do you guys want to see? Yeah. Let us know because we want to make sure that you guys are getting a chance to be heard and uh, make the designs that you want to make. Mm -hmm. And if there's any way that we can help, let us know. We're here for you. Yeah, and it's a fun design challenge for us. Yeah, it kind of. Yeah. It's a, yeah. Well, when I was like I said, when I was choosing those bead caps, I was like, oh, what does go with that? So I had to, you know, kind of design a little bit myself, and it's always a fun little challenge. Yeah, absolutely. So, so uh, we're about to announce our winner. Um, as that name is being picked, I do want to show one more piece. It is Cat's necklace. Oh, because <laughs> I do not want to end this broadcast without showing Cat's necklace. Yes, this is another sort of little fringy thing that I did, and these are beautiful Dakota stones, and this is that white howlite. And I'm gonna kind of separate it out here for you. So all you can, it's just a little wire wrapped and then added with gemstones onto this Nun Design finding. And I just wanted to kind of create, again, just that little movement here. So I have all of my little gemstones here. And I just love this little piece. It kind of reminds me of little like, um, like little snowballs. <laughs> I'm kind of cute. <laughs> but yeah, I created this and I, you know, this is something that I've actually made in a couple of different gemstones in just different styles. And I used all one color, obviously, but you could do um, color blocking, you could do kind of different, you could do a mix and match. So a lot of fun to do with it. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> so, well, thank you again. Oh, one more question. Oh, one more question. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, so if you're watching this later, still keep asking your questions. Um, we have us ready and we'll be willing to answer questions after the broadcast. Mm -hmm. And then if you are watching this live and you just tuned in, don't worry, we are gonna post this later today. Mm -hmm. It'll be on the Beta Halik website. It'll also be on YouTube as well. So if you're catching it there, it's okay too. Okay. I lost the name, but uh, <laughs> the question was, is there a rule of thumb for draping the uh, tassels? Oh, okay, that's a great question. Um, so thank you for asking. The question is, is there a rule of thumb for draping tassels? Um, I don't think there's a rule of thumb per se. I think it's a comfort level is what I would say. Like mm -hmm. if you are draping tassels and you're gonna be wearing them, say you're gonna be wearing this big one, definitely use the softer material. It will feel better um, yeah. on, on your ears. But you see like this is where it's gonna hit you. Um, so I, I do notice, um, I, and I don't know if this is quite the question, but I do notice for a lot of the designs that we've done, um, the tassels come in an odd count, and it's usually so that you can kind of have a center point. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it's five, or it's seven, or it's three. Um, again, I don't know if that's quite the question, but that's sort of mm -hmm. one thing that I know as designers we use a lot. We like to, you know, as uh, Julie's earrings here, they have a nice chevron, so you're going to want that, like, center point. But yeah, I think there's... Yeah. Um, uh, as far as a rule of thumb, it's sort of um, the design that you're working on mm -hmm. and how long you want to make it. We've made teeny tiny tassels and larger tassels, so. Yeah, and, and just look at your other materials. Look at the yeah. scale. I think that's kind of a Well, thing and you can this do. is actually a really good example to show kind of scale. So I think it's great that you put a little bit of a larger piece on top here because this is kind of weighty and it's it mm -hmm. looks heavy. It's it actually doesn't wear that heavy, which is which I my ears always love. But you know, you kind of balance it out there and you balanced it out with a nice little ear hook at the top. Oh, thank so you. I, with it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that design. <laughs> thank you. Uh, we have a winner. So oh, right. and our, our winner, winner is, is Carol Deaton. Carol, congratulations. So all you'll need to do is just email service at betahalik.com and we'll get your information and we'll send this giveaway out to you this week. Yes. So congratulations again, Carol, and thank you so much for tuning in, you yeah, guys. This has been you. wonderful. And again, keep those questions coming. We're still here for you. Uh, but yeah, anything yeah. else you want to say, Julie? Nope, just, you know, like <laughs> Kat said, Keep the questions coming. We'll be checking and, and thank you for joining us. We know time is valuable, but we love you know being here with you and, and hearing all your comments and seeing where you're from. So thank you again for joining us. Yes, thank you so much. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone, and we'll be back with you live very soon. Have a great week, everyone. Bye. Bye, -bye. <laughs>